Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome back to another video in our series where we're exploring sound design on the Korg Volca FM. Now the time has come that we're going to have to talk about this scary looking graph right here. But I'm going to put the graph away for a minute because the graph is useless to you until you understand actually what it represents. So what we're talking about today is operator level scaling. Even the name is kind of scary and I think it's probably one of the least well understood elements to programming sounds on the Volker FM and probably the DX7 that came before it, which is a shame because it's a really powerful and ultimately quite a simple idea that when you subtly can refine your patches so that they sound great across the whole uh, spread of the keyboard, whether you're playing low notes or high notes, or used more creatively, uh, it can be used to completely morph sounds depending on whether you're playing at the bottom of the keyboard or at the top. But let's start by defining actually what it does. So put really simply, the operator level scaling, all it really does is it allows you to alter the level of a particular operator depending on how high or low a note you are playing. That's essentially it. So if you're familiar with the traditional subtractive analog sense, it's somewhat related to um, the filter cutoff key tracking functionality that some synths have, whereby um, as you move up the keyboard, the uh, filter, typically a low pass filter, opens up so that the sound gets inherently brighter the higher up the note you're playing. It's kind of there to emulate something that happens in acoustic instruments. Um, but actually the operator level scaling in the FM world is more powerful than that. Now, as we know, when it comes to operators, they can do one of two jobs. They can be a carrier, the thing that we hear, in which case, if we're going to apply operator level scaling, that's going to alter how loud that particular carrier is, or they can be uh, acting as a modulator, uh, which is going to govern the harmonic richness. So if we apply operator level scaling to a modulator, then we're going to be able to change the harmonic content depending on how high or low we are playing on the keyboard. Now, I think the reason that that graph is so scary is because it's trying to show every possible combination um, all in one graph. So let's throw up on screen a much more simplified version of that graph, basically with no information at all. So the best way to think about this graph is to essentially, in your mind, draw a keyboard along the bottom of it. Once you've drawn that keyboard in your mind along the bottom of the graph, the first thing that we need to determine for each operator is what we are counting as low notes and what we are counting as high notes. Now, in the Volker FM, that's known as the breakpoint. We can essentially move the breakpoint to anywhere that we like on the keyboard. So um, we can have only the last couple of notes on the keyboard down at the bottom count as low notes, or we can have a gentle slope essentially right from the top of the keyboard down and say, well, pretty much everything is low note and we just want to apply one particular curve. And that's the next thing that we need to define. Either side of that breakpoint, we can say that either an operator is going to get louder, so a positive curve, or it's going to get quieter, a negative curve. And then once we've decided whether we want to be negative or positive, either side of the breakpoint, we can then decide whether or not we want that to be a sort of linear straight line transition, or whether we want it to start more gently and ramp up as we get further away from the breakpoint, an exponential transition. Finally, once we've chosen our breakpoint and we've chosen whether we want a positive or a negative transition either side of the breakpoint, we can decide how deep we want that transition to be. So if we only want the operator level to change ever so slightly, we can do that, or we can have a very extreme curve indeed. But as the old adage goes, Talking about music is like dancing about architecture. So let's actually have a listen to what operator level scaling can do for us. So here we've got um, a patch that I pretty much demonstrated in the algorithms uh, video. It's using algorithm 12. At the moment it sounds like this. Uh, if we go into the edit menu, uh, essentially it's made up of two sounds layered together. Um, so the first is the combination of operators one and two, uh, operator one being a carrier and operator two uh, being its modulator. It's kind of just doing a kind of basic bass sound. Like that, very FME. Um, and if we turn that 
uh, operator off and turn operator three, which is our other carrier back on, we'll hear that the other part of our sound is kind of a bell sound. And that's done by um, having all of those three modulators running into operator three, all kind of detuned from one another. Okay, let's put everything back together. Okay, so let's have a look at a couple of things that operator scaling could do for us. Um, for the moment, let's just turn off the bell part of the sound again, just get the bass. Cool, okay. So um, one of the things that happens with FM sometimes is as you go higher up, we can kind of get this sort of slight ugly aliasing and it gets kind of a bit harsh and sharp so one thing that we might want to do uh, in our patches um, where we're getting that sort of sharpness up at the top end is we might want to say okay well that sharpness is coming from the modulator so maybe what we could do is we could make it so that that modulator is less prominent so the level of that modulator is lower when we get higher up the keyboard. So let's head into the edit function here. Okay, so the modulator here is operator two and it's running into operator one. So we want to head over there and let's head over to the operator scaling functionality. So it starts uh, here with LSBP. So that's your level scaling breakpoint. Uh, that runs from zero to uh, 99, 50 being in the middle of the keyboard. Um, I tend to find it's easier to come back to this parameter kind of last, unless you're trying to do something very extreme, like treat everything as being high notes or everything as being low notes. Um, so let's come back to that one in just a second. Uh, I'm just going to skip over these two for a second and move on uh, to these two here. So this is level scale left curve so this is everything that is applied to the left hand part of the graph or the low notes uh, as i like to think of it and um, we're not talking about the low notes at the moment are we we're talking about the high notes so this is the level scale right curve so if you look at the handy dandy cheat sheet that comes with the volker fm um, there is a little bit here where it's talking about these curves here where it says that we have four different uh, values that we can set here zero one two and three, uh, zero is negative linear. So that's your sort of straight line. You've got negative exponential, which is your gentle at first, then steeper. You've got your positive exponential, which is um, the same, but getting higher. Don't want that in this case, because we want to make uh, the operator quieter. And then we've got our linear positive as well. So let's start um, and probably end up, to be honest, at the negative linear, which is actually what we currently have anyway. Okay, so at the moment, nothing's happening with our scaling. And that's because at the moment, we haven't set the depth. So we've got the level scale left depth. So that's everything that's happening to our low notes, how much of that curve we want to apply. Uh, so we're not interested in that one today. Uh, but what we are interested in is our level scale right depth. So this is how much of that curve is applied to the higher notes. So let's just start this arpeggiator going. And just turn this up and see if we can hear something happening. So immediately you can hear that things are getting duller at the top end. Or rather, nicer and smoother, I guess. Now if we go um, out of edit menu for a second, just head back down our octaves, we'll hear that we're still getting that nice thickness there. But arguably, um, arguably we're probably rolling off that top end a little bit too early. So if we head back into the edit menu, this is where adjusting our breakpoint is going to be useful. So at the moment, we're treating our high notes as being too far down. So if we turn this up so that our high notes are a bit higher up, can you hear there that that lower note is now still getting all of the nice pinginess, but it's only those top notes now that are being rounded off. 
That's exactly what we're after. And again, if we head back down our octaves, we've still got that nice harmonic richness down there. It's just that when we head higher up, we're no longer getting that harshness. So uh, let's just hear that to compare. So easiest way to compare would be to turn our depth all the way down. So this is without the scaling, kind of harsh. That's with the scaling, nice and round. Okay, so that's kind of uh, a way that you can use your level scaling to um, to really make your patches more playable across the whole keyboard. Uh, let's come back in to um, talk about our other part of our sound, that sort of bell sound. So um, let's say that what we wanted to do, can you hear there that the bell part of the sound is kind of getting in the way on those low notes? It's kind of a bit weird and clangy. So perhaps what we'd like to do is actually make it so that that bell sound isn't really present on our bottom notes at all. So uh, to put that another way, what we want to do is uh, operator three is the carrier, which is basically representing that, that layer of our sound. So if we apply level scaling to operator three, so that uh, we have a negative curve on the left hand side, the low side of our sound, we can kind of take that bell sound down. We don't have to remove it entirely, just maybe push it into the background a bit. So let's take a look at that. So heading back into the edit menu, uh, we want to be dealing with operator three, which we are. Let's head over to our operator scaling stuff. So we'll start with a breakpoint at 50 again, because as I say, that's that's uh, usually easier to edit this near at the end. Uh, our left curve is what we want to talk about this time, because it's the low part of the sound. Again, um, tell you what, let's, let's try the exponential one this time. So this is a gentler transition, uh, which might work better in our case. So at the moment, there's no change, because we haven't yet applied our depth. So let's see if we can clear up the bottom end of it. Can you hear there that that very bottom note is no longer kind of clangy? Maybe actually using that uh, curve that's gentler was a mistake. So let's try the linear instead. Ah, see, right, here we go. So now it's gone almost entirely from that part of the sound. So that's probably the depth too. And probably we want it to start to come in a little bit earlier than it is. So again, the break point here, we can say that the low notes start lower. So it's really only on that bottom octave that we're not getting that bell sound now. But higher up we've got that cool bell sound because you know who doesn't want bell sounds on a DX synth. Now of course we could tidy this patch up a little bit further. A couple of things that I might consider doing um, would be um, first of all I'd probably want to maybe lower the the belliness on the higher octaves so that we don't get, again, that harshness right at the top. Um, as there are three uh, operators all feeding into that uh, one carrier, operator three, uh, perhaps we more or less take one of those uh, modulators out altogether uh, just to tidy it up. I may also say that, do you know what, as I get higher up, perhaps I don't want that bass part of the sound so much at all. So I might apply, again, a negative curve to um, to operator one to take out that bassy part of the sound uh, higher up in the uh, registers. So I hope that's given you some useful insight on how you can use level scaling to fine tune your patches so that they work really well over the whole uh, range of the keyboard and also um, how you can use it to essentially, we can kind of do faux splits. You can bring in entirely different sounds further up or further down on the keyboard 
uh, that can get really really interesting when you're using three carriers or four carriers all at once and you want to kind of completely morph the sound into something different depending on whether you're playing high or low kind of doing the pseudo uh, keyboard split kind of operation very very cool if you enjoyed the video and that was useful to you please do give it the old thumbs and make sure you're subscribing so you don't miss out on any more videos on the Volcraft M and synthesis in general I am nearly finished um, with building my first patch pack for the Volker FM, which I've been using my Synthomata page to do. Um, so keep your eyes peeled on the channel because I'll be announcing its release there. It will be free, of course, for everyone to use and enjoy and check out. And the neat thing about it being uh, all generated on Synthomata is that you'll be able to check out exactly how I've built the patches if you're interested in that. So thank you again for joining me as we explore um, and hopefully demystify one of the uh, less understood elements to the Volker FM. And uh, I'll see you again soon for more synthesis fun. Take care, guys.